Hi, and welcome to the JFlight SLX 237RVS by Jayco. We're going to do a quick video just to help you get to know this new trailer. We're going to start on the outside with the hot water tank. Here, the important uh, aspects to notice are the drain plug and the pressure relief valve. If you're ever uh, releasing water from the drain plug, always make sure you activate or release the pressure with the pressure relief valve. Moving on, we'll come to front storage compartment. Connects via handy magnet. Under here, we'll find your crank for the stabilization jacks. There are four at the four corners of the trailer. These are used to stabilize, not to level. Uh, and then the other crank we find in there is for the electric tongue jack. We'll see that in a minute. So continue on the front, watch out for the snow. Uh, we're gonna take a look at your propane system. And on this unit, we have a, what you call a crossover regula regulator. So the crossover regulator, whatever direction this handle is pointing to, it'll draw from that tank. When the pressure drops in this tank, or it empties the tank far enough that the pressure is low enough, it'll automatically kick over to this, this tank here, regardless of where you point that, that handle. Now I've seen this a few times where people put the handle in the middle position and they think that shuts it off and it does not. You're better to leave it uh, to the, uh, the handle this way. So if you're taking this tank off to fill, it should be like this. So that closes this side off. Next we'll come to the battery storage compartment. You have your two battery leads here. And right in front of the propane. Underneath we have the breakaway switch here. This will activate in the uh, instance that your trailer uh, disconnects from the tow vehicle. It'll pull this pin here and engage the trailer brakes. Uh, if you feel like your brakes are stuck on or it's not towing right, you can always check to make sure this pin isn't partially pulled out. Also on this trailer, we have an electric tongue jack we mentioned previously. It has a nice cargo loading light. Electric up and down. And for those times when you don't have any power or the battery is dead, we have a port on the top here that can be removed and you can use the jack from the previously mentioned uh, front storage compartment. So we're going to continue along the front. This is just access to the same storage compartment. We have the back of the refrigerator. We were doing a leak test on the gas in here. So it's always important that this venting remains clear and doesn't get blocked. Don't lean anything up against the trailer as the airflow is needed uh, to pro for the proper uh, working of your, uh, of your refrigerator. Come along, we have your gray water output and black water output. We have the gray water valve there and the black water valve here. You have your shutoff for your low point drains. Stand up and we'll see your city water connection. This is where you put your campground hose basically. And then we also have a flush for a tank flush. Right up here. We're at our shower. Good if you have kids. Right here, we're using it at the moment, but we have your 30 amp uh, power supply cable to hook into the uh, campground power. And right above there, we have your input for your, t for your cable TV or satellite. This particular unit is equipped with a ladder. 
and a mount pre-installed and pre-wired for a backup camera if you choose to purchase one. Outside we have your awning with awning speakers and we also have your GFCI connected plug along with a mount for your TV and your output for your cable or satellite. Uh, move into the interior of the trailer. First we'll note the fire extinguisher. To your left, as soon as you come in the door, you have this nice walk-in closet, pantry. And outside that door, we have all of your control switches and panels for the trailer, or the most of them. We have your indicator panel, your battery, fresh water, black water, and gray water tanks, as well as your water pump and your water heater on electric and gas. Uh, we have your light for your awning and for your uh, the main lights in the trailer. And then we have the awning in and out. And we have the slide in and out. Let's continue right down here. And we'll notice we have your propane CO, carbon monoxide detector, a gas alarm. It's a good idea to test it uh, every six months or so. I say that just you check it with your smoke detector, daylight savings time. It's an easy way to remember. There's a button here you can press to test it. Here we have access to the shower plumbing connections. Definitely handy. Since we're talking about the shower, let's look in at the bathroom here. Here we have your unit's uh, GFCI plug. You test it. You can reset. If you ever have any uh, plugs that aren't working, especially the outside plug or some of the counter plugs, then I would uh, check this to make sure that doesn't need to be reset. All right. Here we have the main area of the trailer. We have your table. This is actually a folding table. It can be put away for storage. Uh, these kind of lap tables can also be removed. Here we have your TV. We have your antenna booster. Uh, you can see the light is on right now. There's a little button here, you can press it. And that will switch it from, an, from your uh, antenna to your uh, cable or satellite. Oops. We have the main stereo DVD of the trailer. auxiliary input as well is an HDMI and a, a USB charging port and it has two zones zone one is inside the trailer zone two are the speakers on the on that I showed you earlier this also has a Bluetooth mode move over next to your thermostat cycle through the different modes here with fan, cool, heat, and off. Uh, you can also control the temp up or down and this button here controls the fan speed. We'll pivot here and look at your the refrigerator. It uh, works on gas or electric. Switch it to the auto position. And if uh, electricity is present, if you're hooked up to shore power, so to speak, it will uh, it will go it will choose electric power. If not, it'll it'll try to connect to get to gas. Excuse me. 
and then gas, uh, you just push it all the way over to gas. If this light is flashing, that means there's something wrong with the gas system. I would turn it off, wait five minutes, and then turn it back on. Sometimes it's just a matter of pressure building up in order to light the, uh, the unit. All right, now speaking of the air conditioner, there's a baffle here, so when you do turn the air conditioner on, when the baffle's open, the majority of the air will come through here, but when the baffle's closed, it forces the air through these ports that are located throughout the trailer. Um, we also have your smoke detector here. It's important that with your CO detector and propane detector, you test them. Um, you test this by pressing the center button and holding it for a few seconds. You'll hear a series of beeps and you'll know that it's working. Turn on your light. And look here, we have a mount for a TV and a cable uh, satellite connection. And we also have the mount installed on the wall. You can see that uh, we have a queen bed. And then here in the bedroom, we have an emergency light, or light, sorry, emergency exit. Um, you push the handle all the way out of the unit, remove the screen, and you can escape to safety. Well, we'll finish off in this area here with your stove. We have your gas top stove, we have your flame in the light position, turn the igniter, turn the igniter, perfect. Uh, the oven portion works the same other than when you turn the light position, you also have to press the knob in as you turn the igniter. And the last item we want to look at is we have your power or load center. This is where all the breakers and fuses are. So again, any power related issues, I would check here. I'm sure I didn't cover everything or answer all your questions. This was meant as a quick little tutorial just to get you familiar with the the new trailer if you have any questions feel free to call in and we'll help you as best we can thank you very much